And this is part two, Mika's brush out. After she's blown dry and I blow all her hair off of me, it's time to brush her out. And I use a bunch of different tools. The first one I start with is a slicker brush. This is an Artero flexible slicker brush and it is amazing. It works really well at getting a lot of the loose dead undercoat off that's close to the top. One mistake uh, double coat dog owners do is use just a slicker brush. It's a really good tool, especially if you're doing line brushing like this. See how I'm lifting up the hair and getting down to the skin. But if you're not doing that, you're not getting all of the undercoat out, which is why sometimes we have to spot shave areas on your dog or they start getting really packed in undercoat. If a slicker brush is all you have right now, definitely utilize the line brushing technique Look at all those big old tufts of hair I'm getting out because I'm getting down to her skin and getting that dead hair out. A lot of hair likes to hide underneath the belly too. A lot of people will miss that. If you're not used to thoroughly brushing your dog, the first few weeks of brushing will seem really daunting. But once you get the undercoat under control and it becomes part of your guys' routine, you it's going to be a lot easier and you will discover your own techniques for what works best with your dog's coat. The neck and chest area have a tendency to get very packed with undercoat, so it's really important to get those areas line brushed. And after you're done brushing thoroughly with your slicker brush, it is time to switch to an undercoat rake, which I recommend over the Furminator brush because the undercoat rake targets just the undercoat. The Furminator can destroy and pull out the guard hairs, which is what you want to avoid. This is the undercoat rake I like. I'm not really sure of the brand, but I have a list of brushes on melissathegroomer.com slash brush with one that I recommend here. And notice how all of that undercoat is just like falling out just everywhere. It's just ready to get out. And this undercoat rake doesn't scrape the skin or cause any irritations. When the Furminator brush first came out, it was kind of exciting because it looked like it took like tons of undercoat out, which in some dogs, I do use it, but very, very sparingly, but you have to be very, very careful. So when it first came out, like we would brush and brush and brush and brush. And there have been times where I would make a dog bleed because I was just scraping her skin, but so much hair was still coming off. And I learned later that I was actually removing the top coat and just irritating the skin. It's all a learning experience when you're starting out. I feel really bad about it though. I brush her for quite a while with the undercoat rake. The neck and chest, like I said before, are prone to packed undercoat. Um, it can be a sensitive area to brush too. Once brushing effectively becomes a routine, it will be a lot easier and your dog will learn to enjoy being brushed. Especially when you're brushing regularly, your do you're not brushing out knots. Uh, it gets to a point where it's just maintenance brushing, so it's a lot less work. I like brushing in reverse on my dog's front legs and the feathers just to really get some of that undercoat out. A lot of undercoat hides there. People don't realize it. Also underneath the brisket area there's a lot of undercoat that likes to hide there as well. I switch between my undercoat rake and my slicker brush. The undercoat rake really loosens things and here I am line brushing her back in. There's a spot between where her hip and her belly is that is like I call it the secret undercoat spot it carries so much undercoat I just I don't know why that area is always packed every dog labs huskies malamutes there's just always just tons of undercoat in this area let's try another angle still using my undercoat rake there's another area in that spot that I was just brushing that just undercoat Look at that, it's just crazy. Like, where does it all come from? It never ends, Mika. She says, she says, I'm just a hairy girl. Just, just I was just born this way. And I'm, I'm just kind of enjoying this. I, see, I just give you kisses to tell you that I like what you're doing. Cause I know you're gonna make me feel better. 
The benefits of doing a de-shed bath, it really helps loosen up the hair so that we don't have to do as much brushing in the professional setting. Some dogs, huskies in particular, really will just tell you when they're done being brushed. They have a certain threshold for how much brushing you can do. So that's why we usually recommend the de-shed bath with our huskies, just so it minimizes the actual brushing that we have to do because a lot of the hair will get taken out while we're blow drying them. Look how sweet she is. I just have to stop and love on her. Plus I'm about to do her nails, so I gotta give her extra love. I trim her dew claw first and then the rest of her nails. Normally I do the nails in the beginning of my groom, but I really wanted to start brushing her. And so I'm kind of sandwiching the nail trim in between brushing. So she does really well for it. That way I'm still ending on a good note. Uh, we end with some brushing and some love breaks. She says, don't touch my foot. Don't touch my foot with that thing. Whatever you're going to do, I don't want you to do it. Mika has some wild hairs on her toes, so I just trim those off. I also trim her feathers and her rear end, but I couldn't get a good angle for that. Now I'm just checking areas for thick spots with my comb. As you can see, all that brushing, and I still have some areas that need some more work. So I'm going to find the thick spots. If the undercoat comes out pretty easy, I'll pull it out. Everything that I'm pulling out with my comb is dead hair. None of this hair is attached to her skin, so it's not hurting her. After I check her coat, I brush her again with each tool, and then I'm going to get under the hood here so I can trim her sanitary area. Dogs who have really furry butt cheeks need a good shave under here so they don't get urine or feces in that area. It keeps them nice and clean. But you really got to get under there with the big dogs. She says, excuse me, um, what are you doing back there? All right, I guess, I guess just get it over with, all right? And here's the aftermath. She says, I'm so happy. Look at all the hair you got off of me, not including all the hair you got off of me in the bathtub. I'm so thankful that I feel just so nice and smooth. I'm a whole new girl. I'm ready to live this California summer life. I'm a good girl now. Just undo this thing so I can get away. <laughs>